Hi! Surprised at this entire set of books? Well, this forms one section of my library and this section is completely devoted to books on Chennai. What I hold in my hand, for instance, is a Sanskrit work, the Sarvadeva Vilasa. In this cupboard, you'll find books in Tamil, English, Telugu and Sanskrit, all dedicated to this city. Let me tell you about these books. I mentioned the Sarvadeva Vilasa to you and that it is a 19th century Sanskrit work. What is very interesting is that it even gives Sanskrit names for some of the streets of Chennai that existed at that time. What for instance could Shepanas Kandhaviti be? It transpires that it was Godown Street in Georgetown. This particular book even covers areas like Triplicane and Nungambakam. In the 20th century, the eminent Sanskrit scholar Dr. V. Raghavan wrote a preface and a translation of the Sarvadeva Vilasa and that was published. This is a photocopy of that book. Now, this is a book written in Sanskrit about the history of Chennai. And after that, we have had a lot of English works. But what of the history prior to the arrival of the British? Did Madras or Chennai really have a history before that? Most certainly it did. Our history goes back several centuries before the arrival of the English. And therefore, the city does not begin in 1639 as many would have you believe. That history of the portion before the arrival of the British is covered in Dr. K. V. Raman's early history of the Madras region. It starts from the Paleolithic times and brings you right up to the point of the arrival of the British. It talks about inscriptions, it talks about vestiges that are left behind in, in terms of place names, in terms of localities, in terms of some small rocks, some burial spots and things like that and makes for compelling reading. One of the best books that traces the history of Madras before the arrival of the British. The English came in 1639 and after that they began writing the history of their presence in this city. And there are several books but some are absolute landmarks. One of the earliest is Madras in the Olden Time written by J. Tallboys Wheeler. Working for the British government here and also writing extensively for the newspapers. In 1861, he embarked on a series of articles that was published in a newspaper called the Indian Statesman. And that in turn was compiled and released as early history of the Madras region. In 1881, this book was completely impossible to get hold of. And therefore, Higginbotham's, that historic bookshop and publishing house, brought out a fresh edition of this book. This gives you the history of Madras from 1639 till 1750. What is so special about 1750? I mentioned in a couple of episodes prior to this that in 1746, the French came, bombarded the fort of Fort St. George and the British left immediately for Kadalur. For three years, the French occupied Fort St. George. In 1749, following the Treaty of aix la chapelle the British came back. And that is why Tallboys Wheeler locates his history between 1639 and 1750. After his time, the most comprehensive history by far of the city of Madras is Vestiges of Old Madras. Though this may be one title, in effect it is four books, four volumes. The first three being the history of the city and the last one being an index of everything that is given in the first three volumes. It's a magnificent production. When you go through this, you find histories of road names, histories of building names, names of all kinds of forgotten people, forgotten trades. For instance, why is De Silva Road in Mailapur called De Silva Road? Who was De Silva? He was the bootlegger or the liquor seller to the East India Company. And he made so much of money 
that he could buy a vast tract of land and build his house and that is how the area is known as De Silva Road. Love, the author, Henry Davison Love, Lieutenant Colonel Henry Davison Love, who wrote this book, was a teacher and later the principal of the College of Engineering, Gindi, which we today call Anna University. Only in his time, it was not the College of Engineering, Gindi, because it wasn't in Gindi. It was located at Chepok Palace in Thiruvallikeni. Love lived on the campus in a house known as the Lodge. It still survives and it is let out for film shootings. It was there that he started this magnificent work. He completed it in England in 1913 and then it was released. This brings us up to 1800. And even today, this is the reference volume to go to if you are interested in the history of this city. If you have read all the three volumes, then you are an absolute expert on the history of Madras. Love released this book in 1913 and two years later came out this book which you are already familiar with. I have dedicated an entire episode to it. That is Somerset Plains, Southern India, written in 1915. This is the book where you see photographs for the first time of Madras city. Prior to this, none of the publications, including Love, have that many, have any photographs. They may have portraits, they may have maps, but they don't have any photographs. This is the first book which carries photographic history of how our roads were, what were some of the business houses of the city, where were they located. All the details are here in this book. That was in 1915. In 1939, the British celebrated 300 years of the founding of Madras. We may not agree with the fact that Madras is only 300 years old, but they dated their history from their arrival in this city. They came in 1639 and so in 1939 they celebrated the tercentenary of Madras. A special tercentenary committee was formed and they brought out the Madras tercentenary volume. Divided into various sections such as the geography of Madras, the water supply of Madras, the rivers of the city, history of place names in the city, notices of Madras in historic works, all of these are contained in this book, the Madras Tercentenary Volume. This committee was headed by Rao Saheb C. S. Srinivasachari and he wrote a parallel book which is History of the City of Madras, also released at the same time in 1939. Between the two of them, they form a very interesting work indeed. Thereafter, for a long time, we didn't have much of a history of this city. But then in the 1980s came probably the biggest star and that was S. Muthaya. He called himself the chronicler of Madras. He never called himself a historian. But he did a lot more than what probably most historians did. For instance, he ran a continuing column which went on almost for 18 years in the Hindu and that was called Madras Miscellany. And finally, what he wrote at the end of 10 years was brought out as a compilation and released. Mr. Muthaya had a very unique way of writing that column. Every time he would write a top on a topic or a story, people would respond giving their own views and their own comments and sometimes giving their inputs as well. That would form the basis for a subsequent column. In many ways, as he himself acknowledged it, this whole column and the book became a collaborative exercise. And what was great about him was that he acknowledged every one of the contributors who wrote in for that particular column. Apart from writing Madras Miscellany in the Hindu and bringing out this book, Mr. Muthaya wrote several other books. Perhaps the most important among those is Madras Rediscovered. He first wrote a volume in 1990 or so. I am not very certain when he wrote the first volume, I think 1988-1989. And that is when he realized that tourists did not have any book on the city. So he wrote a slim book called Madras Discovered. And that became so popular that he kept adding to it. And at the end of eight editions, this is what you see a very comprehensive history of the city. Mr. Muthaya was in many ways the guiding star of the history of Madras. You may wonder 
that there is not even a single Tamil title in all that I have shown you. There is a lot in Tamil, but it is scattered. There are articles, there are short stories, there are small booklets, but no single comprehensive work is yet to emerge in that language. But yes, there is a crown jewel, perhaps one of the best. Ashoka Mitran Sir's Chennai at a Glance or Uru Parvail Chennai Nagara. Taking the various localities of the city, he wrote a series of articles and those were published in the form of a book. It's a wonderful read if you want to get a bird's eye view of the city. With his humorous way of writing, he brings together so many different facets in this particular work. In the midst of all this, you also have Chennai, not Madras, brought out in the 1990s, in 1996. What is the significance of that year? That was when the city changed its name officially from Madras to Chennai and there was a lot of protest about it. This book protests against those protests and it says that the name had to be Chennai. It also shows you how in Tamil and other Indian languages the city was always referred to as Chennai and not as Madras. Edited by the well-known writer and historian Dr. A. R. Professor Dr. A. R. Venkata Chalapati, it has articles contributed by several other scholars. It gives you a very different perspective of the city. Now, why am I giving you this entire build-up of all these books that were written? Well, I too have been writing a book on the city for the past three years and it got released just a couple of days ago. Chennai, a biography published by the House of Aleph, the Aleph Book Company. It's available in all the leading bookstores of the city and also for ordering on Amazon, both as a Kindle version and as a book. Do read it and send me your feedback as to how you found it. If you like this channel, share it, subscribe it and comment on it. And I promise to soon be back with you with lots of other stories. Thank you very much and bye for now. Thank you.